Hello, good morning, and thank you all for joining us on today's episode of True Potential's Morning Markets. You're joined this morning by myself, Matt Henderson, and I'm one of the portfolio managers here at True Potential. Casting our eyes back to yesterday and thinking about asset market returns, starting with equity markets and closer to home in Europe and the UK. We saw slightly weaker day to what we've seen so far this week, so UK equities down about half a percent, European equities in sterling terms down about 1%. But how we would like to contextualise this is actually the performance over the week. So over the week, European uh, European equity is still up 2.5% in sterling terms, FTSE 100 still up 2%. Looking over into trading in the US with the S&P 500, we actually saw trading uh, at open start weaker, so down 1%. And we saw a bit of a rally throughout the day. So S&P closed 20 bips down, so 80 bips performance made up during the day. Once again, if we think about that over the week, that's 2.9% in US dollar terms and up 2.7% in sterling terms. Now, the theme that we've talked about throughout these videos in terms of bond market volatility continues uh, throughout this week and throughout yesterday. We actually saw that in both gilts and US treasuries. So the 10-year UK gilt up 16 basis points yesterday and the 10-year US treasury up 12 basis points. The other major movement that we would like to highlight for asset market movements yesterday is just what we saw in gasoline or oil prices yesterday after the OPEC plus announcement. So OPEC have announced that they're going to cut supply by roughly 2 million barrels per day. However, once again, if we think about that in terms of global supply, global supply is about 100 million barrels per day. So although 2 million does seem on the surface a large amount to be cutting, that's only actually 2% of global supply being cut. Now, moving on into the data front and starting in chronological order and working our way down, we'll start with the European PMIs. We had those released by Italy, France, Germany, uh, Spain, and also Europe as an aggregate. And what we saw was similar readings across all. So that index has fallen below 50. So remember, index readings above 50 show the sector is in expansion territory those below 50 show that we're in contraction. However, the market was actually anticipating this. And if we pair that with Monday's uh, PMI manufacturing data, once again, we saw that reading come below 50. So fitting with that market narrative and that theme we've talked about as an investment team of European equity uh, or European economic growth slowing this year. However, if we contrast that to the US ISM that we had released yesterday, reading a lot stronger. So that came in at 56.7 56.7 for the US ISM services. Um, what we're seeing within the underlying components within that index is new orders remain strong, so demand is there from consumers. Uh, prices paid component, that's falling, so we've seen an easing of those inflationary pressures that we've seen in developed market economies so far this year. And also employment remain robust, so businesses still going ahead with uh, hiring plans. Linked to the employment that we saw in the ISM, was also the ADP report or the employment report out of the US. Now, market participants pay particular focus to this as it's seen as a lead indicator for the non-farm payrolls, which is released on Friday. Report showed that 208,000 jobs were added to the economy over the month, about in line with market expectations of 200,000. But what will uh, be very important is that non-farm payrolls that I mentioned released on Friday is once again that will give investors another um, insight into potential monetary policy action from the Federal Reserve once they meet for their next FOMC meeting. So that's everything from us this morning. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on tomorrow's episode. If you're interested in taking your investing to the next level or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, then download our free guides to ISAs and pensions. These are available in the video description below.